Let's -a go. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is the Ninja Reviewer here, and welcome to my review of. As, uh, well, why did I just say that? Why did I go with Ash Class? My Hero Academia, or if you uh, translate to Japanese translation, Bokuro no Hero, episode number 10. That is one O of My Hero Academia. So, this week's episode of My Hero Academia, The Villains. Yeah, The Villains. Alright, let's go with Racerhead. Racerhead, I love a Racerhead now. Oh my god! Did you see the way she he picked up this bitch from like her fucking hair? And when you saw that, he like fucking just swung him and he just landed her on the ground. Like, yo! And he was just taking away people's fucking corks like it was nothing. Like, this one dude, which I don't know like all the villains' names, because obviously we didn't get the review of all their names, or pretty much whatever. So what happens is that they're all pretty much fighting Eraserhead, and 13 is pretty much trying to protect the other students. But meanwhile, we see the other students that were supposed to do the whole rescue thing are all separated. <coughs> Excuse me. They're all separated, all the students, and they're separated into their proper teams in order to actually do their little uh, rescue mission. And even though they're not really rescuing like anybody just yet, they're just defending themselves against the villains. So... What we have here is we have, um, uh, I forget, we have Shoto and someone else working with him, but I forget. But we have um, Okako and we also have Tenya, and they're actually, you know, working together as a team. Now, th number 13 told Tenya to actually use his speed to get out of the actual building because the villains, they pretty much cut off all communications right outside, from, I mean, from inside the actual building to where they are to do their, their actual um, their exam. But unfortunately, what happened, what happened was, is that the villains infiltrated any um, communication lines during like cell phones, etc. Uh, so they couldn't really communicate, and that's why All Might had a hard time calling like a racer head, calling the top heroes, even Izuku, and you know that pretty much let them stuck. And he still has to recover most of his powers. So that being said, though, we also see him and the principal is there. Which I guess he's some kind of panda. No, he's like a mouse or some shit. I don't know. He's some kind of panda mouse breed. I have no idea what the hell he is, but okay. So what happens is, is that you know he finds out you know what he's been doing, but he you know, he says he says to All Might like you know what you can't help it. Um, you know whenever duty calls, you know you always answer the call. You know no matter what. So basically that's what happens with All Might. And that's why he wasted so much of his power in order to actually save it better in case anything happens. Because the villains, the reason why they're there in the first place is to challenge the the savior or the keeper of all peace, which is All Might. And the thing is, All Might wasn't around, so they were pretty much just waiting on him. But unfortunately, he wasn't around. So we got the other dudes. And uh, I think this one guy, I think his name was... Oh! The, 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 the fucking... The, 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 the darkness. The black dude. Oh, I think his name is... um Shit. Um, what the hell was his name? I think it was like Kuru Giri, I think his name is, or some shit. I think it's like Kuru Giri, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I believe his name is like Kuru Giri or something like that. Uh, anywho, yeah, so Corey Gary, you know, he says that, like, I am the one, you know, we were the ones that were challenging All Might, but he's not here, and even though these guys are students, he goes, like, you know what, our team ain't gonna go easy on you, just because, you know, you guys are students, so, so that, you know, that's pretty obvious, so because of that, they are not gonna go easy on them, so we see that what happens is, is that Izuku, we have uh, Minita, and then we have Suyu. They are one actual team that's on a boat that got separated from the rest of the heroes because they were surrounded in the water. And Suyu actually makes a really good opponent for the water because Izuku was actually found himself in the actual water when he was actually about to battle them out because unfortunately he fell in the actual water and he was about to battle this like uh, this uh, sea creature thing. But of course we see Suyu, you know, just whooping some ass because of course. She's more of a, uh, a frog creature, so that kind of makes sense. So what happens is that she ends up saving Izuku, and uh, 
Mimoru, and what happens is, it's actually kind of funny how, like, while she, she gives Izuko a really good proper landing, she doesn't do the same thing to uh, Mururu because she's, he says that, wow, like, you know, for a frog, you got really nice big boobs. And then she gets a little, like, blush and embarrassed, and then she pretty much just, like, fucking slams him on the fucking boat with her, with her tongue. So that was actually really damn funny. So anyways, we found out that Mimoru was kind of acting a little more like Izuku used to be back then when he was corkless. So, technically, he says, like, oh my god, I'm so scared. You know, come on, dude, you're on that same level as me. You know, I'm not that strong. You know, I just got this cork myself. But Izuku, no. He got really great development. He got balls. And then we saw Baku go about, like, yo, Baku, I'm going in, yo! That was that cool. Seeing Baku go going in there and actually going in and teaming up and fighting the villains is actually really cool. So that was pretty awesome right there. I really need to see more. Yo, Shoto, man, yo! Fucking ice, ice baby, yo, Aokiji motherfucker. I love this dude. This dude is my boy. I love this guy. Fucking, I got this ice box where my heart used to be. Yeah, straight up. So I love that. So we have him, and he's actually another favorite of mine that I'm gonna keep an eye out for because he's actually really cool. So um, me, uh, Mororo, um, he actually, you know, there's this power he has where it's like some kind of sticky thing. And since they can't get it off, it's like a magnet thing. And what happens is it kind of like, it's like a distraction thing. Or it's pretty much some kind of like explosive, you know, whatever. And the more, you know, you get distracted by it, you know, the more he releases this like sticky little bomb stuff or whatever it is. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly. Uh, his powers, uh. Um. trying to remember exactly like his power like he has these little pop balls things and the more you know he can actually use them more of them will pop and they will like explode like on people enemy like kind of like a bomb however though there's a catch the catch is though is that if he um if he uses so many of them he can actually bleed out so it's kind of like a double-edged sword kind of like izuku's uh all for one um, cork that all might pass down to Izuku, so that actually kind of makes sense. But when it comes to push, come to serve, you know, um, it, when it comes to Izuku pretty much thinking on his feet, like he's like, you know what, you know, I could just use a little bit of my fingers or one of my uh, one of my hands that can actually work. And while I do that, you know, we can make our quick escape and actually defeat some of these enemies. Um, the only thing I just didn't really care for. Now there was no um, recap in the episode, which I thought was actually really cool. Um, I like the Black Hole Dew. I like number 13, so we got plenty of good action. My only complaint about the episode is that it took a really long time in order to actually, you know, get to the main point because we're seeing, like, I mean, we, we see Zuku go into a character that's actually really awesome. So, like, I don't know. I mean, if I had any complaints about the episode, uh, not really because I think the episode followed actually quite, you know, well. Like, you know, at first I thought I was going to have some complaints. Like, I thought I was going to, like, not like, uh, me need, uh, what was his, what was his fucking name? Me, 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 I'm just calling me, me Nita. Me Nita? Yeah, me Nita. Me Nita. Me, fuck, I can't pronounce these fucking names. Jesus Christ. Um, Manita. That, we're, we're just going to call him that, okay? Because that's what, uh, that's what Suyu actually calls him. Speaking of which, I really like this one funny moment where Izuka was about to call her by her actual last name, but she he actually called her by her first name because that's what she likes to be, you know, properly called. So that was actually really funny there. Like, you know, she does, like, these little funny facial frog expressions. It's actually really cute. She even goes ripping, which is kind of adorable. And, you know, some people say that she's, like, the best waifu, but I'm sorry. I still think um, Utako is, like, the best waifu for me, just saying. Maybe her or Suyu because it's really, really hard to choose because they're actually really both good female cork awesomeness. So that's actually really cool. Then finally at the end, we see they actually work their differences. Where you see, like, um, Izuku pretty much use, like, his cork. And, you know, he uses his, um, his Detroit, his Detroit Smash or Missouri Smash. Whatever the hell it was, one of the smashes. And then he uses that to, to bounce right back and to actually beat some of the enemies. So that way one of them is down. And then Suryu can actually just fly them off while he's using that attack. While he's diving into the water, Zuyu comes in there, and he also got um, 
uh, Minita as well. He's like, okay, I could be cool too. And he just like sticks onto like the fucking enemies and we see him in the water. You know, the pop things like, oh shit, and they're popping or whatever. And they're like, you know, they're popping up and shit. And then they're going into that like whirlpool thing. But he used a little bit too much, but you could tell that Minita was actually kind of bleeding a bit. So yeah, that's actually pretty cool. So when it comes to this episode, it really does give some little bit on intel when it comes to Minata because we haven't seen this character do out much of this uh, anime of this of this anime series. And then um, I really did like his all his his one regret is that he wanted Ya Yuzuru's boobs. Like he wanted more of those sweet big ass titties. Like he really really does. <laughs> Like yo, straight up, the dude is a freaking perv. Like honestly, like that—that's what—that's one of his dreams are. So yeah, when it comes to that, he's pretty much a little bit of a perv, but a little bit of like an Usopp thing in a way because like you know, like at first you know he looks like you know he could be somewhat useful, but then all of a sudden he's kind of in that same way that Izuku used to be because you know his quirk isn't really that strong, or I think he just like kind of a starting getting used to that quirk or something like that like a double-edged sword so you know they're kind of alike you know him and izuku in a way but even though izuku is kind of better just saying especially how much he's matured you know throughout the series and etc so yeah that's pretty much it overall there was a lot of intense battles i like the battles in those episodes we see the other students going all in which i really like just seeing them all battle out against the villains very awesome stuff right there. I especially like this one scenario where you got like the fire and you got the tail dude, which your name was like, uh, his name was uh, Ijuro or something like that. Ijuro? Yeah, that dude. That dude was cool. I like that little scenario. So there's going to be some like mad hype setup battles that I'm actually looking forward to. This episode was just too damn good. I actually really enjoyed this episode a lot more than I expected to. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below of this week's episode of My Hero Academia episode 10. And my score for the episode is a 5 out of 5. Definitely one of my favorite episodes because we got to see more of the villains, which was mad hype, and they ain't no bitches. They're actually worth the hype blow. We see a racer head going in, and that's some cool shit. And then we got this plan in motion where hopefully uh, Edia is able to, or I mean, I'm sorry, Tenya is actually about to go in there, and he is about to actually speed up out of the actual building in order to actually get some help. Hopefully that actually plan succeeds. Well, let's just hope. Now, I'm really hoping we don't don't really have only three episodes left because that would seriously suck if we only really have three episodes left. I'm really hoping that we do actually extend it for like an hour 20 something episodes which would be really good. I really wish it was an ongoing long series like Fairy Tale was back in the day but I guess they're, 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 uh, they're, they're pfft, sorry wow the tone twister. They're starting to see this whole trend thing with long running series is. Doesn't really, you know, what it's cut out to be, if you know what I mean. So that's why they have to pretty much cut it down to, like, basically, like, you know, like, a certain season. Like, with 24 episodes, 25 episodes, etc. Which kind of makes sense, but at the same time, I really do like the whole long-going thing. I kind of missed that. Fairy tale had it for a while. Hopefully one day, Toriko will get the same treatment. Madhouse, or Madhouse, uh, Bones. Where I Toriko at? Just saying. Just saying. So that's it. I'm done. Give me your thoughts in the comment section below of this week's episode. Again, final scores of 5 out of 5. Let me know your thoughts. And that's it. So don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe to the Ninja Reviewer. Also, crush that like button. Spread the word of my channel. It actually helps a lot. Thank you. So this is the Ninja Reviewer signing out. Peace, soul, love, chicken grease, and the sky is the limit. And I also hope... You enjoy your daily dose of moose milk, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I know. I gotta, I gotta try to amp that up. That little joke there, anyway. All right, anyways, uh, bye, bye, guys. See you guys next week for episode eleven.